Hello and welcome to this tutorial on recording narration directly into Premiere Pro. What quite a lot of people don't realise is that Premiere Pro is a recording studio. Admittedly you can't record multiple instruments at once, you can only record one stereo pair. However, you can record an unlimited number of tracks into the audio mixer. All you need to do is make sure that you've got enough tracks selected and as you know you can right click in the header here and you can add tracks and you can add as many audio tracks as you could possibly need to bring in multiple instruments, multiple voices which can all be mixed directly here in Premiere Pro. And you have the option of also creating sub mixes and you can then master them to a final output. In other words, you've got a recording studio even though the limit is you can only record one item at a time. Now a couple of things you need to know before we start recording audio into Premiere Pro. The first one is that you need to have a compatible sound card and to find out about that really we need to go to our preferences. So on Mac you go to the Premiere Pro menu item and then find preferences. On a Windows machine it's edit preferences and we'll go to audio hardware. Now for a Windows machine you need to have an ASIO compatible sound card which is audio stream input output which is what ASIO stands for. For a Mac you need core audio devices. Um, and if you have those then you need to make sure that they're set up in your machine as you can see I've got the inbuilt Premiere Pro sound but I've also got an ASIO device which I can connect if I want but actually I'm using internal sound as it works fine for my system if you do have an ASIO card or you have core audio devices then you will need to click the setup box and make sure that it's all set up properly this is really covered in your user manual to make sure that your audio is recording into your system which is beyond the scope of this tutorial a couple of things to mention however, if you have this option, device 32-bit recording, and you want to create high quality recordings, I would advise clicking it, because when it comes to audio, you want to record at the highest possible level that you can, so that if it gets down converted further into production pipeline, you're not going to lose a huge amount of quality. If you record low quality audio to start off with, and it is compressed further down the production pipeline, you're going to end up with something that sounds terrible. So always record audio at the highest standard that you can get away with, which your system will cope with, which your sound card will cope with, and for the amount of hard disk space that you have for recording. So if you can do 32-bit recording, I would advise to choose 32-bit recording. Click OK on that one. I'm going to do that on mine. The other thing in preferences is under the audio tab just here above audio hardware, where you have a couple of options just here which are really important. Um, firstly, play audio while scrubbing. That's an editing thing. And what it means is while you pull your current time indicator along, you can actually hear the audio playing. Sometimes that's useful, sometimes it's downright annoying. Well, just know you can turn it on and off here in your preferences. The second one is quite important for recording. It says mute input during timeline recording. If you don't have this checked, then you can get echo and reverb on your recording. That just sounds bizarre. And it's especially bad if you have your speakers on. So I would advise mute input during timeline recording is an essential and you really need to select that. Now the other thing to say is speakers on and off. Sometimes you have your speakers on when you're doing a recording so that you can hear what you've said but if your card is not a very high quality card and it doesn't have a very good latency response. Now latency basically says the computer has to take the input, process it and then play it out through speakers or headphones. Now if it's got high latency, in other words it takes quite a long time for it to process the information before it comes out the speakers or the headphones, you're going to have a delay between saying something and hearing it. And when that happens, it causes you to stutter in your speech. But if you have a very low latency card, which really records it very quickly, then you can have headphones on and get away with it. What I would always say is, when you have to do recording, don't have the speakers on because they will go straight back into your microphone and you potentially have a real problem with feedback, which will just screech and sound awful. So always have your speakers off. If you do use headphones, make sure that it doesn't cause you to stutter by having a big delay. If you've got a delay, don't use headphones. Just record it, go in and edit it and check it's okay. Do a sample take first and then come back and do it. Okay, I'm going to click OK to that. There is one other thing I want to show you that's also quite important about quality for audio. I'm going to create a new sequence. So I'm going to go to the new items icon and click sequence. And I'm going to go to the general tab and I'm going to go down to this area that says audio. And it says sample rate. Now the human ear at its best can effectively hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And these are the samples that are taken, and you can specify what range they are. Now for CDs, it's 44.1, which is 
which is twice 20 kilohertz, the maximum we can hear, plus a bit. So what it's saying is that the very highest frequency is going to take two samples of that frequency, plus a little bit more, so two and a bit samples per peak of the waveform to give you an idea of what it should sound like. Now if you're recording high frequency noises such as cymbals, bird song, anything that's fairly high frequency and it's important that it sounds really good, you want to go from 44.1 or the standard DV, DVD 48 kilohertz all the way up to 96 kilohertz because that's effectively going to give you more samples for every peak. So down at 44.1 at CD level you get two samples for a high frequency peak so it's a rough average of what it should sound like whereas at 96 kilohertz you're going to get about four samples per peak which is going to give you a much more accurate estimation of what the sound should actually have been at those high frequencies. So high frequency work definitely be up at 96 kilohertz. Usually you should be fine at 48 kilohertz for video. But if you're at all worried and you want extremely high quality audio, go up to 96 kilohertz. The downside of 32-bit recording of 96 kilohertz is that the file sizes are going to be bigger. You can't have higher quality and smaller file sizes, it just doesn't work that way. So if you want high quality, it means bigger files. Lower quality, smaller files, but I tell you, audio is more than 50% of good video. You can watch a great video, and if the audio is bad, you'll walk out of the cinema. Whereas if the audio is brilliant, but the picture quality is only average, you'll stay and watch it because you're carried around by the sound. So bear in mind that audio is greater than 50% of good video. Okay, so we set things up, click OK, got a new sequence, and now I'm ready to do some actual recording. Well, I hope you found this setting up tutorial useful. In the next tutorial, we will do some actual recording. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. Thank you.